glorious lot. Um, how art thou? Uh, nice to see you again for those who are back and welcome for those who are here for the first time. Although I don't think you would be searching for something like this. This is more for my regular subscribers. Loads of you have asked for me to do a video on my setup and how I came to this setup. So I figured it would end up a bit rambly. So I'm just gonna do the tenor for now and then another day I'll do my alto and then maybe I'll branch out and talk about my barry and my soprano as well. So um, I'll introduce you to my tenor. This is a Yanni, nice basic Yanagizawa. So first of all, why Yanagizawa rather than Selma? is what a lot of people will ask. Um, couple of reasons. So at the time, so I would have bought this when I was like 18 or something, and I'm no longer that age. Uh, yes, so, uh, so it's more a top end player, and I bought the tenor because I kind of needed it. It was a useful instrument to have. So I knew I wasn't really gonna practice it enough, and I went for, for Yanni because it's that tiny bit cheaper, really reliable, uh, the tuning's good. They're just really solid horns, whereas I find the Selmas need a little bit more work. Um, I've got so many quirks with my alto and slightly odd fingerings to help with the tuning and things like that. And much as I absolutely love the tone, uh, I would say my tenor's just a slightly easier instrument to play. Um, so sorry, complete, you know, Selma fans out there. I do love my alto Selma, and if I had all the money in the world, maybe I would upgrade my tenor but it's just not been high on the priority list I'm quite happy with my Yanni it just works um and it's really hardy as well I've, I've hardly ever had it serviced or anything go wrong with it it's been brilliant um so yeah a couple of little bits and bobs uh I did get a new neck joint this is a pink gold one at great expense <laughs> but it does make a really big difference um you know if you've got a bit of expendable income and you're you adore your saxophone i would say that it's quite a good investment but certainly not an essential one uh this just made the tone a lot brighter for me so part of the problem for me was i did a bit of big band playing and i just i'm just quite little i'm not a very loud player so i needed a bit more juice out of it um so this made a difference but mainly the mouthpiece um i was never a fan of metal mouthpieces uh it took me ages to be a convert but yeah this is a jody jazz uh seven star and wow it was like life changing when i moved on to this it's got balls can i say that on youtube cojones um, yeah so this suddenly turned my i had a, 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 to, a what do they call it master tone edge osher link you know the the plastic not plastic um what are they called the the non-metal ones um forget what they're made out of i had one of those before and it was beautiful and mellow and i loved it and the tuning was great and things like that and i did have some serious adjustments to do when i came to this and things like they tend to squeak a little bit the metal mouthpieces if if you're not used to them and you have to get get the right read on it and stuff but wow did it boost my sound and it suddenly went from kind of this lovely mellow jazzy sound to being much more of a pop player and it's because there was one particular band that was making a lot of my income from which was kind of that honky tonk raucous big solos and um yeah my my tone edge just didn't have the corners that i needed <laughs> Uh, and on here, what size reed have I got on here? Now, I think I've gone quite soft, again, for volume. God, it's moldy. That's terrible. This is a Lavoz, uh, medium soft. Now, Lavoz are expensive. They're noticeably more expensive. But I find, and anyone who's a regular sax player will know, that you buy a box and you love about half of it, and you're lucky if you love half of it. You'll then maybe use another quarter but you won't enjoy it or you'll try and adjust them, which reminds me, um, you might want to watch my video on how to adjust reeds when they're just not really working for you or they're about to die and you want to make them last a bit longer. Here's a link to that. Um, but yeah, and then a quarter of them you'll just throw away. There's no point. You just throw them away or if you're like me, you keep them in a drawer. Not really sure why. I, I often go to look for things like batteries and find that there's just reeds everywhere. Like, why have I kept those? I don't understand why. Whereas Lavoz, I do find I use almost all the box um, for tenor. And because this metal mouthpiece is quite volatile and it will 
snap at you and it will squeak and things i've just gone for i've gone for the more expensive ones and i try and make them last forever which is why this one's slightly molding um i had a go with the legers um if you follow me regularly you know i've done a review on the silicone plastic reeds um and i didn't like it as much it sort of took it a bit too far towards the pop side for me um whereas on the alto i i, I did really like it and i used that reed for a long time and now I'm finishing up another box, but I might, I probably will buy the Legere again for the Alto. But I'll do my Alto setup in another video. Apart from that, there's no real adjustments that I've made to it. Oh, just things like, because I use the front a lot, my um, front E wasn't very open. So whatever key, this key, I had that adjusted. So if you find on your tenor, if you're a Yanni player as well, and you've been following my videos and I've advised you to use a front E or a front F and yours just sounds quite weedy compared to mine, it might be because I had some adjustments made on these to open them up a little bit more. Um, and you can see I've had some engravings done. They were actually done by my hideous ex, um, but we, we don't speak of him. No one likes a cheater. So yeah, last little accessories that I used with it um, that you might want to look into. This is a beautiful strap that was a gift um, and I do get a lot of comments on it at gigs and people think it's some elaborate necklace or something. It is gorgeous. It's um, DG, which I, is it Dave Garland? Anyway, they have them on sax.uk. Um, I'm sure they do them in America, Australia for you guys following there, but it is beautiful. They've got them in black and things as well. Um, really really comfortable strap and i think this is gold plated the clasp but it's it is like obscenely expensive i think it's something like 70 pounds or something hideous like that i mean you don't need something like that that's just a lovely gift um i use on both my saxes i use the k&m stand um i think it's called the saxy stand and it's just really clever it folds up and goes in the sax but it's actually quite sturdy whereas the hercules one that's the um, sort of rival brand. I think it's a little bit cheaper, but it's really unstable. So I got rid of my Hercules ones and I went to K&M in the end. Um, I, stupidly, I actually have done a really quick video on how to put the K&M stand together because I know a lot of people when they first get it can't work out how to put it together and it doesn't come with any instructions. It's actually quite complicated, so that sounds really stupid. But if you do end up buying one because you're like, oh, that's a good, good shout. I like one that goes in the bell of the sax and then you've never forgotten it. You um, you might find you buy one, cut it through the post, and you're like, how the hell does this happen? So uh, I'll put a link in the description box to that. Um, and the case I use is the Bam Cabine because it's so small. It's brilliant for tenor, especially if you're a little person like me. Um, it's, yeah, it's tiny. I can fly with it. I get away with it. Um, I've done loads of flying with it and they've never been questioned. Um, and it's really lightweight as well. So I'm looking at it now, just while I'm staring down there. I've done a review on that actually to talk a little bit more about it because, you know, cases are expensive. So don't just go straight out and buy one if, you're, if you've watched this video and you're like, that's what I want. And also you've got to be a little bit careful that it doesn't fit every single sax. So you need to try it really, or, or at least order it from somewhere you can send it back to, uh, just in case your horn doesn't fit in it. Uh, but yeah, do check out the review. I'll put a link to that in the description box as well. Um, and I think that's it for all my tenor accessories. Um, hope that was useful. Give it a thumbs up if it was. And I will do one on the alto as well, especially if um, a few of you give this a thumbs up and I realise that it's something that you want to know more about, like my setup and how I came to it and what sort of reads and mouthpieces I've been through and, and ended up with these ones. So yeah. Hope it was good. Comment, tell me about it. Tell me about you. How are you? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. More saxophone antics coming your way. Bye guys. Bye.